Thank you, Aaron. Greg Rubel is a radio play-by-play -play voice of the Cougars, Blaine Fowler, television analyst for Versus and The Mountain, longtime friends of mine. This is the friend segment. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for glad. What to has be it here. been like, miking up and calling for dead every night? It's been a thrill, yeah. and uh, I remind myself not to take it for granted because I really think of Jimmer as a as a once in a generation type of player. Uh, Danny Ainge was just before my time. I came to BYU as a student in 1984 and there have been some great players during my time as both a student, a fan, and, and, and now a broadcaster. But I think really uh, Jimmer is singular, one of a kind, and, and I'm grateful every time we uh, you know, we take the air and get to call his number and name and his shots that he makes. Now in television, not only you get to call the shot, then you, you look at the replay and, and then you can do the distance for how far the shot was and you get a chance to react as people watch it unfold. Oh, it, it's been an unbelievable year, and I, and I do think that Jimmer is a, a unique talent. You know, he's he's the kind of guy that brings excitement to the game, fills the Marriott Center, and we haven't seen that for years and years. And, and I was here when Danny was here and, and watched Devin play, Devin Durant. Uh, you know, I, I missed the Kresmir Chosich time, but um, and I understand that he was a very exciting player, but I can't imagine a more exciting player anywhere in the country. You know, I haven't seen them all, but... He fills the building, and everyone leaves just shaking their head in awe of the things that he's able to do out there. Now, Greg, you go into all these arenas, and they're hostile, and then he just seems to quiet them down. It seems to thrive on that. And in some instances, he manages to excite them. Uh, uh, enemy arenas uh, in Tucson uh, last season. That was maybe the first time where I realized what he could do to a crowd. A crowd that came in cheering for the Arizona Wildcats against BYU by the end of the game was marveling at what they were seeing. Their team was going to lose and lose big. They began to then have fun with what was going on. Jimmer was putting on a show, and even the road fans had to enjoy it in a way. It's not always that way. Right. Uh, you go into a lot of buildings, uh, San Diego State, VA House Arena, uh, they're never going to be on Jimmer's side. They'll, they'll have more fun booing him than, than marveling at, at anything he's doing. But even then, uh, you can tell he feeds off the energy he gets, especially away from home. And, and you may not like him, but you've got to respect him. And every, every fan before whom he's played away from home comes away thinking, that guy's amazing. Well, one thing he's done is to put both of you guys on Sports Center, like all the time, <laughs> whether it's the TV call or the radio call. I'm living in Las Vegas, and I hear you guys all the time. Is there one play that blows your mind that you've seen this year? I've, I've seen a lot, and I had the, the chance to do both Utah games, yeah. which was exciting. And, and I remember when he made that half-court shot, he had made a shot that was – had to be from 28 or 29 feet earlier, and it just got more and more ridiculous as the game went on. And then when he made that half-court shot, you know, I just said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then he turned around and he had no reaction. Like most guys run around with their hand up near. Right. He just turned around and, and, I, and I said, well, look at him. In his mind, he's just like, yep, I'm Jimmer Fredette. That's what I do, I make shots. So then I turn on Sports Center that night. It's the number one play of the day. Right. And that whole call is where I start getting texts from my friends back in New York and neighbors going, you're a coat tailor, man. You are riding on Jimmer Fredette's coattails. Yeah, yeah. Ride as long as you can. You know, it's that, that shot was amazing. That game was amazing. Just, just one of many. But uh, he can take over a game. And uh, even opposing coaches, because I get the chance to meet with the opposing coaches right. every week and talk about what they're going to try to do. Mm -hmm. Then I get to interview them after the game. They're all fans of Jimmer Fredette. They love the way he... Uh, the way he plays, but they also like who he is, and they have great respect for him. And it's fun to hear what they're trying to do to stop him unsuccessfully, obviously, all season long. What about uh, your moment? Tough to beat the half-court shot uh, against Utah. Yeah, both you guys were and screaming. <laughs> I could barely concentrate on the play. Bl Bl Blaine did a much more restrained job of, <laughs> of, of, of relaying the excitement uh, to the public that night, but that, 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 that was unforgettable. Um, a game or two later, uh, they were at the Marriott Center playing TCU, and there he was. Uh, between 30 and 40 feet away from the basket. We measured it the next day to be about 32 feet. And I remember on the shot saying, oh, no. As in, not, not, not no, don't take it. Like, oh, no, he's not going to do this. Oh, yes, he is. And he shot 32 feet over Ronnie Moss, who was giving him a good five feet of distance, too much distance in this case. He nailed that shot like it was nothing. And, and that's who Jimmer Fredette is. He has range the minute he passes midcourt. You've got to guard him all the way out. And if you don't, he's going to knock it down over you. Well, even for me, I look back to the Arizona game, which we did on BYU TV, and he manhandled the Wildcats, who have proven to be a very good team. And that's the game for me where I sat back and I thought, hey, you know what? Who's going to stop him in this league once Mountain West play starts? And not many have. No, And you know what? Teams have taken different tacks. I, I talked to both uh, Tim Miles and Steve Fisher first time they played him and what their plan was the second time they played. The first time both teams decide they're going to take their best athletes and run them at them. Right. 
right. and try to cover him one on one in, in normal help defense rules. The second time they said, okay, that didn't work. He just killed us. So now we're going to double team him 30 feet from the basket and make him give up the basketball. And all Jimmer did in this last game was throw out nine assists. Why is it that he has become this national, he's the national face of college basketball? I think there are a few factors. One of them is just the name itself. It, it's, I mean, who's named Jimmer? Exactly right. Right. It's it, it's it, it's fun to say. It, it's original. He's the Jimmer. It's just fun. It's just fun to to identify him that way. So there's a name. We start with that. There's the fact that he's rather average looking. He looks like a lot of people you and I might know socially on a regular basis. And now, we might not necessarily throw him the ball in a pickup game. <laughs> he has that kind of appearance. He, he's very normal, I guess you could say. He doesn't he doesn't appear to be super athletic. He's not super tall. He's not the fastest guy on the right. floor. Uh, yeah, so he looks like somebody we could all, I guess, relate to in, in a way. Then there's the things he does um, that are unusual. Uh, the fact that he shoots it from so far away, the fact that he can score inside and out, he does things that make us go, wow, he really can't be guarded, can he? Um, and, and he's affable. He's friendly. He's genuine. You want to like him. He, he's, he's achieved um, celebrity status in that celebrities outside the game have adopted him as one of their favorite people or right. players. Yeah. So all these things together, I think, uh, make him someone that uh, a vast, uh, wide swath of people want to cheer for and take an interest in. So at some point this week, as you're both in Las Vegas calling the games on TV and radio, do you step back and you give yourself a minute to go, hey, you know what, I might not see this ever again? You know, that's very true. I I'll tell you the thing that I love about Jimmer Fredette. I knew him before he was the Jimmer, and you did too. Uh, my daughter was in the dorms with him, and he used to come up, up to Kaysville. He was roommates with uh, and good friends with Nick Martineau. And so they'd come up. He's a local kid. And through all of this, he's still the same kid. He's still the exact same kid yeah. he was when he was a freshman. And I marvel at how a guy with that much publicity, with that much of a spotlight on him, with a media circus all over the place, when you get away from basketball and talk to him, and I get a chance to once in a while still, just the same old kid. That's why people love him. He, he's normal, and he's stayed normal in the face of all this publicity, and that's what I appreciate most about what he's done this season, not just what he's done out on the basketball floor. The, shot, the spotlight shines so brightly on him. You wonder how it might affect dynamics within the team, right. and, and, and no such trouble. Every, everyone on that team uh, truly, I think, appreciates who he is, what he's done for the team, the program, and they want to see him do well, and they're, 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 his, they're his biggest supporters. Okay, thank you. It's good to have you in our studios. It's good to be here, Dave. You guys are welcome here anytime.